All right, there's a question. Where can I find last year's webinar? Go on Edmodo, Joseph. And we had invited out everybody in middle school and high school for the webinar. Please go on Edmodo. I will be uploading more things uh, tonight. Uh, and Edmodo has the PDF. It has everything. All right, we're going to get started. We have 7 of 10 here tonight. Okay. Okay, folks. Um, we're going to do a, tonight. We're going to go ahead and we're going to review a programming language to get started for what we'll be doing with our Arduinos and the microcontrollers in two weeks. And it's called Scratch. And Scratch is a uh, great language developed by MIT. And Harvard uses freshman programming languages. Uh, if you've done Scratch before, I'm going to add some new wrinkles to it. We're going to show you how to do arrays and things that commonly aren't done in Scratch. We're going to do it with it. All right. So to get to Scratch, it looks like this is the logo. To get to said logo, I want you to go ahead, download it, install it. So please go ahead, raise your hand once you've installed it. Uh, you don't install it, excuse me. Once you get to the site, I want you to register on it. So right here's the home page. Here's Scratch. You go ahead and create an account. Use your Google Mail for that. Create an account. Raise your hand if you already have an account or if you want to have one. If you don't have, if you don't have um, Scratch, let me show you my screen again. Hopefully my screen's unfrozen there. For some reason it was frozen there for a second. Should be okay now. Raise your hand if you see the home, um, Scratch homepage. It says Scratch homepage. See if you don't see that. All right, great. All right, good. Back on there. So I don't know what happened there. All right. So we've got a recording. I think when I record it with another webinar, it does that. Okay. So I'm put everybody's hands down. Raise your hand once you've made your uh, account. Yeah, jo okay, Joseph has made his account, I'm assuming. Joseph, if you've got a question, go ahead and write it. Everyone, right now, raise your hand if you've made an account or you have one. Um, I believe, Ben, you have one. So right now it stands, Joseph has created his account. Let's get everybody else raise it. How do you make your account? Go up here where it says create. Um, excuse me. I got to go back up. Let me get let me get into Scratch. I'll show you. All right. I'm on here. But here's profile. If I signed it out, let me go ahead and sign out. Join Scratch. That's how you make it. That's what you do if you need to do it. Join Scratch. Okay? Use your Google Mail that we've used. Raise your hand once you've gotten your account done. When this webinar is over later tonight or by tomorrow morning, I will pay, post the PDF so you can go back through this. So you can be all set, okay?
Right, member Thomas, you had to make an account to make your Google site. Use the Gmail account. Go ahead and use that same email for that or an email you want to use. I don't, you know, whatever. I'm just suggesting that one. You also need to do this on Chrome as much as possible. Um, Safari, it may or may not run on Safari. So right now, by now, it should be join Scratch. Let me know once you've done it. Raise your hand once you've done it. Well, Varun, I go on. I make sure you're running on Chrome. Varun, make sure you're running on Chrome. The web browser isn't working. I'll bet you're running on Safari or something else. How are we coming there, Philip? If you're using an iPad right now and you're going to do this later, tell us so we're not waiting on you. I would say that um, you need to be near a laptop. I don't think we'll explore or we'll use. I think you really need to be using Chrome if you're having a problem. Anton, I mean, if Anton, you got yours to work with it, great. Tell me. So he's telling me uh, Explorer seems to work. Use that one then if you've got Explorer. Okay. Um, at this point, we got almost everybody. It's, I'm on Chrome and it won't let me click on Join Scratch button. I'm not sure why it won't either. Reboot up your computer. Every, Varun, I can't help you on that, my friend. Sorry. It should allow you to click on there. I'm not sure why not. Reboot it up, re, re, relaunch your computer, jump back on. Okay, I'm going to put everybody else's hands down. And if you can't get on now, that's fine. Just create it, Varun. And then later on, try to rejoin in. Later, just go on to create then, even if you're not signed in. Just means you won't save to the cloud. All right, now. So you log in, it'll start to allow you to save your stuff, you create a passenger. I need everybody's attention here. Let's take a look now. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at Project Editor, Block Palette, and Script Area, okay? That's what we're going for now. This is where the sprite is the kitty cat. The Block Palette is where we select our scripts or our code, really. Costumes, the way the sprites change their looks. Sounds. And this is the script area where we drag the scripts over. So that black palette is where a lot of this action happens. There's scripts, costumes, sounds, and their scripts look at motion, look, sound, kind of get used to what they what these things are. We'll show what they mean down the road. And we can take it from there, okay? Now, here's our kitty cat. That's a sprite. Alright. So when I go to new sprite, there is the sprite. The stage is what the cat's on. So let me go up here. I'll do another one. Create. So there's the cat right there. You'll get a trial. It's not logged on. It's going to do that. All right. So there's the cat. Down here is the stage. That background on it. That background's in white. Here's the sprite for the cat. Then, we need to make a scripts area. You go to the scripts area. That's this part right in here, and the scripts area is right where we drag our scripts in. If you go to costumes, there's where the cat's costumes, and you click on sounds, you're going to get sounds. All right, let's take the move 10 steps and drag it over. And then follow by going to looks and say hello two seconds after that. I'm going to show you all this again. And then click event. When click, do these two things. So let's go through that again. Go to motion, select move 10 steps, move over. Go to look, select say hello for two seconds. And then put that flag on there. 
once you get done with that you're going to end up um, running the program by clicking on the flag right up here so I'm going to say move 10 steps over go to looks let me see if I make this I have let me second I'm going to blow this up a little bit so there's move 10 steps then I'm going to go say hello for two seconds and then I'm going to uh, go to the event go to events click on click then up here by the red stop sign the green I'm gonna hit go go ahead once you've got that let me ask Anton what his question is yes Anton what's your question Anton do you have a question okay for some reason I'm not hearing you so go ahead and um, just write your question to me right now let me go back I'll show everybody else where do I click to get in that stage not where I click to get in the stage here you're right over here you're gonna go to file create the kitty cat's gonna come up there's the sprite here's the kitty cat can you find the cat here in this whole thing if you go under file new create it'll bring you to the screen with the cat down there's the stage in that white part there's the cat up here in the stage here's the sprite the stage is to the left here's where all your code is that's where we want you right now Okay, we'll watch it later, Dane. Great. Raise your hand once you're at this point. You've gotten the cat to move. Raise your hand once you've done that. Excellent. Excellent, everybody. Nice. Excellent. All right. Ben, you're not paying attention. I know you know how to do this. Varan. Have you gotten to go? All right, good. Jason, let's see how we're doing there. All right, don't put your hands down. Let me put your hands down for you. All right, I'm going to put everybody's hands down now, though. Okay. In the future, let me do that. Where is the play button? The play button is that green flag up at the top. Right over here by the stop sign, by the kitty cat. See right there? That's the green play button. All right, excellent. Now, let's keep working at this. So we've done that, try it. A sequence in programming describes the order in which a series of actions in your code will be carried out. Scratch uses top to bottom sequencing. So we have control, wait one second, repeat. All right. 
so you have control. Let's go ahead and repeat this. So if sequence is, tells you the order, that's why it was important that the cat, when you look at your code, say we look at our code here, when you click, the cat moves 10 steps, and then it says hello. It doesn't, even though it looks pretty fast together, if you slowed this down, you would see that's what happens. If I go ahead just real quickly, I'm going to put a control here. I put weight, and I make that weight five seconds. Let's go ahead and do it. You know, he moves not very far, and then you can see the words come out. Five seconds is too long. Do that. So that order matters. So sequencing matters in programming. Now, whoops. I don't know about you, but I want my cat to go across there faster. So what we're going to do is repeat it. That's a loop. That allows us to repeat things very quickly. So let's go over here. I'm going to go over to controls again. I'm going to get the repeat. And I'm going to make this one second so I can see it. And let's let it go. I'm going to make that one second watch. See how he's slowly moving across? All right, so we had that. Now, all right, hello times 10, that's exactly right. All right, go ahead and try it. Raise your hand once you've done it. As you can tell by the way we're doing this, this is a lot of you doing it and we're going back and forth. I'm leading a live webinar. Okay, well done. Most everybody got it. Nice. In programming, sequences with a loop restart from the top once they've been completed. Each time they complete, it's called an iteration. An infinite loop will keep going over and over again. It used to be infinite loops were thought of as bad things because they tied up computer resources. But when we get in the physical with the Els Arduino kits, you're going to find out it's a good thing. Now, by the way, you can duplicate, delete, and add comments to your code. So right here, if I wanted to copy this, I'd right-click it. I could delete, duplicate it. I could delete it. I could add a comment. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a comment to repeat. It's going to come out here, and I could say something like, so I could type, this will repeat the code 10 times. OK. 
comments are great when you start doing, particularly when you start doing elaborate programs to help you remember later what you were doing. It's amazing to me as a former programmer, and I still program for fun, um, how much I forget just six months later. So you really want to keep the code so you can go back later. Plus, sometimes you'll create something pretty cool and you want to remember it and share it down the road. Well, if you have the comments, it makes it a lot easier to do that. Uh, costumes allow you to go ahead and change the costumes. I'm not really, this will flip the costumes left to right, upside down, set costume center. I'm not really too crazy about that. All right. So go ahead. We're going to select the kitty cat. The cat has two costumes. And then we're going to use code to make the cat, the cat move 10 steps, wave two steps, move back 10 steps, change the costume. Change Y by 10, wait two seconds, come back by 10. Let me go back over just because I moved a little bit quicker on that. Let's go to the editor. Let me show you. There's the cat's costumes. I go up to costumes up there, right? I right click on that. I say duplicate it. Now I have a third costume. I can um, blow the costume up like that with a little plus sign at the bottom. I can take this little eyedropper on them. And I'll do a little yellow here, and I'm going to add a little yellow eye. So where's the little, kind of, this is fill me in a little bit. Let me move this over just a little bit. So I can go in here and over to the right and put yellow there. Let's try this again. Now if I go, yeah. I gave him a blue eye. Patch eye on my kitty cat. So there, there he is. So let's go back to my, let's go to my event. So I now have three costumes. Go ahead and try this. Make three costumes. And then go ahead and let's try, all right? Don't get real wound up about the costume. For that matter, the costume can go on there and drop a new one in, make them a bat for that matter. It doesn't matter. Raise your hand once you've got it. Let me show for those people. You don't have to watch this if you understood how I did the costume, but I'm going to show you again. I'm going to go back. Say I go back to scripts. If I want to go to costumes, I go up to the center tab here, click on costumes. If I want to make another costume, I just pick one and duplicate it. And now I have a fourth costume. Over to the right is where, where all the commands go. So I might... Like I can click on this reshape thing, click there, and I can reshape his face. See? Make his jaw bigger. Just some of these. These have to have vector graphics for that to work. I might go to draw and go get black. Give him that look. I have no idea why you would do that, but then we go ahead and get the color and the shape. I'm going to give him a red eye. So blue eye, red eye. Go back to scripts. Then I'm going to tell it as he moves. I'm saying move 10 steps, wait two seconds, move negative 10, that's back. Go to the next costume, you find that under looks, change Y by 10, wait two tenths of a second, and change Y by negative 10. On scratch, it's a coordinate system. All right, it's a coordinate system. So here's X and Y, there's X, Y. X goes left to right, so that's negative to positive on your X axis, there's your Y vertical axis.
So let me go back to that. Try to get this done, folks. All right, Joseph's got one. Go ahead and write a question if you have it. If you got it done, good job. Anton's got it done. Ben's got it done. Good job, everybody. Kalen, well done. Good job, folks. Remember, don't get wound up on a costume. That's not the important thing here. What we're trying to do is get you the idea of looping. Idea allows you to repeat commands. The look command gave you the costume because that's the appearance of the sprite. So you can have very different sprite looking sprite, but it's always the same sprite. Ada Lovelace in the 1840s um, was working with Mr. Babbage. Babbage, can't think of his first name. Babbage um, was the first inventor of a computer. If he's the father of computing, then Lady, Lady, Lady Lovelace is the mother of programming. She first person in the world to program, propose the whole concept of a loop. So very brilliant woman. Just imagine what the Brits, Brits could have done if they had invented a computer by the 1860s you know, that worked. It would have changed everything. Because suddenly they could have done calculations and made a lot more discoveries sooner it would have dri driven it. Okay, who's come on? If you've got a question, let's ask it. we got some more people knocking this out. If you're bringing an iPad, make sure that you do this on the other time with it, okay? All right, I've got 8%. I'm going to go ahead and go on here. Now, when you want a new sprite, you go up, we we change the costume, you can click on this new sprite icon and you'll get a new sprite. So let me show everybody look at this, please. Where it says new sprite down here, you click on that. And then we try to find that Gobo thing. There it is. There's Gobo. All right. If you look at Gobo and go to its costume, it automatically starts with three little things. Okay. So that's how you find a new sprite. You can also draw, you can draw in things. We'll get to that in a minute when we make our paddles, we start doing ours. If you go on the stage icon, you can start doing things with the backdrops and you get different backdrops. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There it is. Go to stage, select backdrop. So do a new backdrop. Choose it from the library. Where's the theater there? The stage. So in this case, it might be or the schoolyard. Where's schoolyard? There's the chalkboard. Take that one. So that's one. So there's my first stage, my uh, dashboard. I can also copy that, duplicate it, second one. And then I can draw on it and use my white line on this. Let me go ahead and do this. Let's go here with a brush. There's a reason why I'm a programmer, not an artist, guys. Welcome. That's what I'm trying to write here. I feel like the cows in uh, Chick-fil-A. All right, so there you go. Welcome. All right. So those are my three stages. Nothing. Welcome. All right, now. So we've made that. We've made high class. I had welcome, whatever. You have this code to make that to do it. 
and you could switch it on the cat here and he would move and click so you've got four costumes for the cat go ahead and write this code code start off with this costume chalkboard start with chalkboard one and then switch to chalkboard two after he moves 10 steps raise your hand once you've done that Raise your hand once you've got it, guys. Y'all doing pretty well. We're going a little, we're going, uh, we're keeping you busy with this. Whoops. I got about half of us there. Good job, folks. Hang in there. A lot to learn. Good job. Well done. Again, you can create it without being a member of this, so you can do it that way. All right, I got to do this, folks, just because I'm going in. We're going to start next. We're going to do a little bit of uh, the pawn game. So I need to ask this. All right, how's my pacing going? Okay. We got 90% voted. All right. Well, I really appreciate you all telling me that. I'm going to close the poll at 90%. Go on 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I'm going to show the poll. It says I'm going too fast. So I'm going to go back over there one more time here. So everybody sees what we do, and I will slow way down for the, I'm going to slow down on the uh, other one, all right? All right, someone said, just got my to work as it should. Great. Well, I understand if you haven't been able to get yours down. Let's go, so let me just go back to real quick what we've done. Oh, why did I do that? Come on. All right. I'm going to go up here and just review just one more time what we're trying to do, and then we're going to go into the Pong again. And I'll slow it down for everybody. Here's the palette project editor. You see the sprite? That's the kitty cat. It can be lots of kitty cats. We can change the appearance of that cat. We can even make it a bat, frankly, by just changing its costumes. Make it anything. Below here is the cat sprite. The stage is what the cat's on. We change the backdrops on that. Here are the code we associate with scripts. 
We also go here to change costumes. We go here for sounds. We drag our code here. There's the X and Y axis. See how it's in zero, zero? X to the right of that would be positive, one, two, three, four, five, six. To the left of it would be negative one, two, three, four, five, six. That goes to the left. Y is up and down, positive and negative. All right. All right, Philip, why don't you ask your questions? For some reason, oh, go to webinars fussing at me about sound. Oh, you still see the poll? And Mr. Dubik has got a mental block and hide in the polls because it, it doesn't go away on my end. All right, hopefully you're seeing it now. Thank you, Philip. Varun, I see you finally gotten it working properly. We're going to go through. I'll slow the pace down as we go through the Pong game. All right? But I want you to say, this is the main layout where everything occurs. Let me see if I can see the question here. Okay, I still see this poll. Hopefully you don't anymore. All right, now let me go to the next. So that's where all the scripts go. I'm going to put your hand down. If uh, Let me go right to here. Whoa, 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 what am I doing here? Sorry about that. Don't worry, I'm going back over this a little bit quicker. I don't expect you to do it. I just want you to... See, once you get a sprite, I added a new sprite, this new sprite, and has three different costumes there. And then when I'm on the stage, the little white backdrop, that's backdrop one, I could create other backdrops. In this case, it was the chalkboard. And then we could write on the chalkboard, and we saved it, so that, that had three. And so where we're showing where the cat can move and do all these things. Let's do Pong. Now, what I want you to do is do a new file, save what you did, and you know, screen capture some of the stuff later and put it in your digital portfolio. Are we going to do sound? Not right now. You can play with sound later. What I want to do is just kind of get us going towards this. Some more programming. All right. Scratch can do really a lot of incredible games, folks. Don't, you know, you can get into it and really get crazy. So, when I click on a flag, the first thing I'm going to do is, let's go up here. Wait a minute. Let me we delete the cat there. We're gonna add these sprites, a beach ball and a trampoline. Alright, so we're gonna delete the cat. Right click on the cat, delete it. Or use the little scissors up here. So let me show you. So say I was gonna go and do a new one here. Yeah, I'm gonna discard my contents. I've done this thing. All right, I want my cat. Everybody take a look at this. I'm going to take, I'm going to do a new sprite from the library. I'm going to go to things over here. I'm going to select, you can beach ball, basketball, I don't care what you pick. So I have this, and now I need a trampoline. Go back to new sprite. Go to things. Double click on the trampoline. That's there. Then I can take the cat, go down here, right click on him, and delete him. I can also use the little scissors up there to delete him. So I can click on that, little scissors, boom, I cut him out there. Raise your hand once you have your trampoline and ball. That way I won't go any farther until you have that. All right, we got 60%, 70, almost everybody. All right. Well done, everybody. Now, 
Let's everybody double click so we know we've got it. Or double click down here, click on the trampoline. Click on them right there so you have them on the bottom right here. Now we're going to write code for said trampoline. The event's going to be hey, when I click the flag, then I'm going to put a forever loop. I'm going to say, hey, don't ever leave this loop for this thing right here. All right. And then we do a little bit of a something. We're going to set X. To. Miles X. So we're saying the trampoline is going to be mouse X. So when I run this program, if I use my mouse, I move my mouse around. See? If I use my cursor, I move my around. I don't want to move the Y. Y is up and down. All I want to do is horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Put everybody's hands down. Let me show you again. Go to events to get the flag. Go to control, the yellow ones for that forever loop. Motion is set X to mouse X. Mouse X is the X when I run this cursor across, it'll follow. Watch, I go that way, this way, back and forth. All right. Now go ahead and go ahead and raise your hand once you've done that. Well done, everybody, getting there. Excellent. So if you hit the green flag, your trampoline should be running back and forth. All right, got 80% of you saying they've got it. Okay, pull this up here real quick. How do you change it to mouse X? I'll show you right here. All right, I'll change you that. Go right over here, find over in sensing. All right, let me just put it back off. I was doing this all over again. I would go into motion. I would set X there and inside the forever loop. I would then go to sensing and select mouse X. These are all color coordinated. When I don't want something, I throw it there. Raise your hand once you've gotten it, folks. You wrote the call. My ball moves with the trampoline. Okay, you've done that where you've copied the code on the ball when you should have copied it on the trampoline. So there's the trampoline, right? There's the beach ball. There's the trampoline. There's the code. If somehow I copy this code, I can copy it and drag it right onto the beach ball, by the way. I don't want to do that, but you can do that. So you've just put the code where the beach ball is. You need to put the code over the trampoline. So just copy it over. Way to do that, highlight this. Go over here. I hit the duplicate. See how the whole thing goes there? And then if I take it over to the ball, it's over by the ball. Now I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't want that. But let me show you again. Right click on this, hit duplicate. Click right on the on what you want to put it. In this case, you probably want to put it on the trampoline. 
I'm just to demonstrate I'm putting it on the ball. Okay. Now, with our trampoline there, we've got our ball. Now we need to write call code for the ball. So we've gotten that. You've done that. Now let's get the ball bouncing. What we're going to do is we're going to tell the ball right off the bat to go to a certain direction to begin with. Then we're going to point it in a direction, in this case, 45 degrees down. We're going to select ours 180 down. If Then inside that, put a forever loop, and if it says on edge bounce, otherwise move 10 steps. So I'll go over the code and do this. Events. When click, we want this to start. Then we go to motion. Now notice it says go to... X is 1, Y is 65. If I move the ball, it's even going to be a different number. It'll automatically put it wherever you want the ball to start. So I'm going to say I want it right there. So every time I play this in the future, I want the ball to be right there. X 25, slightly right, and 144, which is pretty high in that. Then I'm going to point it in a direction so it falls the right way. So I'll move that over to here. 180 down. Now I've got the ball, so it's pointing the right way. I run it, not much is happening there. My paddle's working there, but it's not really doing it. You know, we're not getting where we want to be. So let's go back to the ball. I'm going to put a control there, a forever loop, because once it starts, I want it to keep going. I'm going to tell it, move 10 steps, and if it hits on a bat edge, if I don't do this, watch what happens. It just falls down and just stays stuck there. It's a bit of a problem. If I hit the green flag because I tell it to start at 25 Y, it'll automatically go up there, but I'm not really doing anything. Ball's just falling over and over again. But if I say to it, hey, if, if on edge bounce, and I drag that in there with the move 10 steps where it says move 10 steps, if on edge bounce, doesn't bounce, it keeps doing and doing until it hits the wall. Watch. Now it bounces. Go ahead and try that. I'm going to stop my screen. All right. I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Once you've tried that, let me know. If duplicate isn't coming up as an option, then go ahead and use the little, uh, right here. If duplicate isn't coming up an option, hit the little pad up here next to the scissors, left of the scissors. Make sure you're on the one. Oh, let me see here. There's duplicate there. I'm not sure why yours isn't coming up, but so I just did it. I'm not sure. But go ahead and use the pad and the scissors. So use the little tramp there. Raise your hand once you've got this to work. Excellent, folks. Keep it up. Mess with the speed of it. For those folks that are done... While we're waiting, you can be doing some changes. Let me show you what the screen should look like. Move the fall 
make the ball fall down, not sideways. Move the ball to go faster, make the ball go faster, make the ball slower. What could you change? And go ahead and try and do that, folks. All right, most everybody's gotten it. Well done. Well, well done. Keep it up. Okay. Now we're going to do the next thing. Think about it. If I was there and we had plenty of time, we would sit there and we'd say, well, and I want you to think about it. now. I'm playing a pawn game. The ball's falling. Like when it falls right now, look what happens. Nothing. What I want it to do is the ball hits the trampoline and goes up, right? That's kind of the basic of the game. So what I need to do is ask a question. If, make sure this stays outside the sift, then the move and if on edge bounce, make sure it stays out of the sift on its own. If the ball, and this is again on the ball we're doing, so if it's touching the paddle or trampoline, I want it to change direction, zone I. In this case, up. Now watch. Boom. Let me know once you have it doing this. Joseph's knocking out of the park. All right, job. good job, Thomas. A couple of you. Good chill. We got six to ten. Let's get the rest of everybody else. Come on. Excellent. Come on, Ben. You can knock this out. So now we have it pointing in a direction. We have it moving. Game starting to take effect. But I'll tell you what, though. The ball's bouncing straight up and down. No worries. It's easy to do. No, you know, people do that. All right. So say I want it when it bounced. That, yeah, it points up, but I'd like to put a little spin on this thing. So I can turn this 15 degrees. Watch what this does. Now it comes at an angle. But even then, that gets to be predictable because it's just going back and forth at the same angle. I can do this. Turn in 15 degrees. I can say... With a math operator, so that's green, so that's where I go to find this. Instead of turning 15 degrees, I'm going to do a random number from negative 30 degrees to positive 30 degrees. Okay, so let me go, whoops. Make sure you hit the top green flag, not just this green flag. Now I've got something that goes sometimes straight but every once in a while it goes over just like in the real world all 
All right. Put everybody's hands down. That gives you a sense of changing it. It's a random number from negative 30 to 30 degrees. 360 degrees in a circle, so it just gives it a nice little angle. All right. So it's like going from uh, negative 30 minus 360 or 30 minus 360. So from 330 all the way from 330 up to 360 over to 30 degrees. If you don't know degrees, don't worry about it. All right, now we've got that pretty pretty cool, very cool, I would say. Um, let's look at what else we could do with this. An if-then statement tells your program to execute a certain section of code only if the expression evaluated is true. Well, well, that's a fancy way of saying it. It evaluates what you're writing. If it says that's true, do this. So if it's touching trampoline, turn this many degrees and move 10 steps. All right, now the next one we're going to do, you get to this point. Last thing I want to show you, if I may, go to our code. Let's go back in a new sprite. We're just going to draw this next one. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so the grid isn't so blown up. All right, here's my grid. I'm going to take the rectangle. I'm going to draw it all the way across the bottom of that. Then I'm going to fill it in. Fuck it. With red. There it is. It's over here. And what we're going to say, we're going to call this new sprite. If I go to I, I can name it. And I'll stay here and answer everybody's questions and I know how to do this. Call this one dead zone. This is the point at which if we miss it, it hits the red, we want our ball to go away. So let's click on this ball. Another if then statement. If. I think you know where I'm going with this. Make sure the move and if on edge are out of the if then statements. If. Touching. Dead zone. Then we can do this. We can go look and we can just hide it. Hide. Now, there's a problem with that. It just hid the right. I can see on my X the things bouncing up and down, but I can't see it because once I touch the Z zone, it hides. Well, what we can do is we can say, okay, if that's the case. Go back to motion. Tell it to point in direction. Tell it to go to a new location. So I want to go to hide it. Tell it to go to direction x25. Let's make y up high, so 110. And then unhide it with show. So watch. Now the problem is not touch anything, so I need to put that show up here as well. Right when the program starts up, so I know it's going to come there. Boom. Boom. I know it's working. Now I'm making sure everything else works. Now I'm let go. There it is. If I miss it, boom, it's going to pop in. All right. <laughs> All 
I'll stay on while you try to get that to work. Because now you have the game. You have a game. Now I can show you how to add data to this, which we'll do. I can show you. Let me move on that game there. So it's... You can make a noise every time it hits the trampoline. It makes a noise, thump, thump, or whatever. A tennis match. Raise your hand when you've got that dead zone. And again, we're making a new sprite. We had to make a new sprite. Remember, just go right down here where it says new sprite. Go a little paintbrush. Paint out a red rectangle that we can put across the bottom of this. It doesn't have to be red. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. I just made that easier in a line. And then our code Y says if touching that dead zone, which we named the red line dead zone, hide, so the ball is going to hide, go to 25 by 110, X25, Y110, then show yourself. All right, and then since we might, the game may end with us, the ball being off, we need to make sure we set it up so it's turned on in the beginning. Raise your hand once you think you've got it to that point. Nice. Nice, folks. Good job. We learned a lot. You learned how to make a Pong game tonight. And you can change the speed of this. You can do different things. Notice as the ball spins, look at the direction and its X and Y coordinates are constantly changing. All right. Got to go. Bye. I'm sorry, Ben. You got to go. All right. Now, um, we're set at this point. One thing you can do, last thing I'll just show you. You can change what the ball looks like. Change the score if the paddle touches. These are all things we could start doing you could start playing with. It's your game. I'm a big believer of saying you can play any game you want as long as you make it. All right. So there it is. I will put up this PDF. I will put up this recording. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead and write them down. If not, have a great evening. You have lab next Tuesday. No, thank you, guys. Now, let me ask you this. Before you all go, well, many of you have left, but if you haven't gone yet, let me ask you real quick. How did you find today's topic? So, 5% is voted. Give me a little bit more. Whoa, not 100% voted. Okay, let me go ahead, share, close the poll. I'll share the results. I always do. I found 88% said they found it. So, six of you have found it real and found it interesting. Not useful. I think down the road you will find it useful for doing that unless you just don't. You already knew Scratch. Loved it. It was awesome. I'm glad you liked it, Jason. Can you repeat after you said made the dead zone? Yeah, what I'll do, though, is let me just go ahead. I'm going to stop recording and let everybody out of here. And then I will free you, Veron. All right.